Hi there, and welcome to the first episode of The Vintage Cyclist. Today I'm showing you this, a 1978 Voyager Leader, or Leader Voyager. I know one of those is the brand, and one of those is the actual name of the bike, though I have not been able to find out which is which. This bike came into my possession as a birthday present from my father. He purchased it for $50 off of Kijiji about a year or two ago. It is an awful bike in a lot of respects, but it's not meant to be a stellar bike. It's meant to be a folding bike, which is what it is. If I unlatch this here, you'll see it does indeed fold. This bike ha is very different to your average road bike or BMX or mountain bike, as you can tell just by looking at it. It uses a very, very small wheel size. I think it's about the same as most BMX bikes or large children's bikes. I can't give you an inch measurement because I don't know the inch measurement. Though I could probably check by checking the tires. If I find out that measurement, it'll flash on screen right now, right about here. And if I don't, then I'm going to look like an idiot. Anyhow, talking about this bike, there's quite a few things to mention, though not a lot of it's all that interesting. Uh, both posts were rusted when I got it, and I managed to get this unstuck a few months ago when I wanted to raise the handlebars. This I managed to get unstuck last night by the age-old method of boiling water, WD-40, and a wrench that's not a pipe wrench. Uh, the seat is surprisingly comfortable, actually, from what you'd expect. It's got spring suspension and it works pretty well, though it is technically broken and it's being held together by one screw in the front here. The handlebars are not original to this bicycle. These handlebars, in fact, belong to a 1967 CCM Elan. But I took them off of there to put them on here since they're a bit taller and make the bike a bit more of a comfortable ride. If you want to look over here, you'll see that this beauty is equipped with a three-speed internal hub shifter at the back wheel, which means it's got a single or it's got a triple speed single gear setup, which the single gear is right there. And it's got side pull brakes, though what's interesting is that they pull from the bottom of the brake caliper instead of the top, which I personally haven't seen before, other than on this bike itself. The brake lever is also not original to this bike, though I'm not entirely sure where it comes from. I had it in a bag of spare parts and I needed to replace the brake lever since the original started to bend. This bell is not original either. The bell belongs to a blue cruiser bike I owned a number of years ago. If you want to look at the front of the bike here, you can see this, the Lear branding is on the front. And on the side of the bike, you've got the Voyager branding there and there. One thing I certainly like about this bike quite a bit is that it has a very unique look to it. It's not like many other bikes you'll see on the road due to its abnormal looking frame and its very, very noticeable chrome elements, some of which have rusted quite a bit. And I did put in quite a lot of effort to try and de-rust these to a certain extent, though if we want to take a trip to the other side of the chain guard, you'll see that the inside of the chain guard is considerably less rust free. Now you may have noticed there are two levers right here by the, the center post. These are entirely decorative in their current state. They actually don't originate from this bike. They come from a Raleigh record uh, from 1978, same year. However, the person who was going to own this bike, a friend of mine named Alex, uh, was not against the idea of ha having random pieces of chrome on the bike. So I decided to just take out those and put them on here. Originally, this seat was quick release. However, uh, I managed to lose the original bolt, so a replacement bolt was placed there instead. Now, I can show you the front post that holds the handlebars is actually still quick release and is released using this lever here, which you just unscrew like that or rescrew back this way. It's really actually quite handy if you need to uh, adjust your handlebars on the fly, though I've never actually needed to do that in any situation where a wrench wouldn't have worked just fine. The pedals are abysmal, but these are not unique to this bike. Plenty of pedals like these are very common on bikes from the 70s and before. They are garbage, especially in wet weather, where your shoes will fail to grip on them constantly. However, they have nice reflectors. Now, my, uh, my uh, assistant RJ here, who also happens to be my cousin, 
We'll now demonstrate the bike for you in some wide shots here. There he goes. Now this bike had a myriad of issues when I first gained possession of it. One being that I didn't really enjoy shifting and the brakes were the spongiest brakes I'd ever seen. Now the front brakes, since I hardly ever used them, to me wasn't worth salvaging so I simply removed it. As you'll notice there is no front brake on this bike. The back brake however, I recently serviced and works quite well. The gear issue has been partially uh, fixed shifting is possible now however it doesn't really enjoy shifting into lower gears like the first gear or first speed speeds two and three are really the only speeds you're ever going to want to use anyways hill climbing is not something you're really going to do on this bike ever or at least i wouldn't suggest it as you can see no matter who rides this bike it looks absolutely ridiculous because of the shape of the thing but to be honest, the ridiculous look is kind of part of the appeal of this thing. It looks stupid and it's a ton of fun to ride because of the fact that it is stupid. It doesn't handle like any bike should because you've got such small wheels and such a high steering spot. The steering is a joke. But this bike is a perfect example of stuff that I wish was more common now which is more experimental designs and you know things that don't follow the norm. This bike is a perfect example of that. Alright, so now I'll demonstrate to you how to fold this bike. It's really quite simple. This in frame. So, step one, there's a latch right here. Undo the latch. Step two, move the pedal out of your way. Now, this has gotten quite stiff over the years, so I imagine you could have done it with your hands originally, but now a little bit of leverage will help you move the bike into that position. Lying the bike down on its side makes this even easier. You just angle that down. Ah. And then you just pack your stuff and leave. Ta ta.
And if you have a thrill for danger or just stupid ideas, you can do what I've done on many occasions but haven't tried since I raised the seat, which is riding the bike with it half folded. Now, this is a bit of a delicate art. It is utterly terrifying at best and morbidly dangerous at worst. And if you look, this is quite funny to look at. And it really gets stairs, that's for sure. But if attention is what you're looking for, then this is how you get it. Anyhow, I'll see you in the next episode. You're right there. You're gonna get up or what? It's a long way down that hill. Long hill.